the uh, Communication and Policy Committee of the Concord School District School Board. Um, it is February 15th, 2024 at 5.30. Um, I am Kara Meeker, I am the chair. Uh, with me tonight is board members Liz Boucher, Jim Richards, and Barb Higgins. Also with us tonight is Assistant Superintendent John Fabrizio and Title IX Coordinator Karen Fisher-Anderson. Um, we have a few things on the agenda tonight. Uh, primarily, we'll be discussing the first draft that we're seeing of policy number 430, Restraint and Seclusion. Um, we will also have a quick conversation tonight uh, about drafting standards of our policies moving forward. Um, and then it looks like um, we're just going to have a brief preview of some financial policies that might be coming down the pike. Um, John is here especially because he is an expert in this um, subject matter, which is extremely important because it is a sensitive topic um, and uh, it is pretty meaty uh, in terms of language of the policies. So with that, I'm going to give Karen and John an opportunity to intro anything that they would like and then we'll take it from there. Okay, Karen, I'll start and then turn to you. Yep. So thank you. Um, you know, um, and again, uh, I'm here too as um, um, Superintendent Murphy asked me, could I cover this meeting? And I've kind of had it on my calendar knowing that she had um, another engagement tonight. So um, this has been a, um, a policy and a law that's been around for a little bit, been around for a while now. And we've, as schools, um, kind of it's there's policies you you like to have in place and i would say from a from a world of um um of working with children every day it, it allows some clear um, procedures and policy on kind of how to act and what to do in really difficult situations and you often feel like did i do the right thing am i doing the right thing what should i do and this really lays out for a nice foundation to give educators some nice guidelines and and to really have some good thorough discussions with teams um, around students when they are experiencing difficulties that lead to restraining seclusion and it allows us a nice um, basis for that to happen so there's some laws that we go Ugh, kind of with this is one that we kind of say um, it's very detailed which is hard but it also um, gives some nice parameters to it too so I just wanted to kind of lead and say that that it's something that um, we take very seriously we have um, we we believe in the practice of um, CPI which is our, our um, which is a crisis prevention Institute who offers training um, that we take part in that allows us to do a lot in prevention you know, um, leading up before these things happen. And then the last resort when we have to, it trains us in simple methods to keep the child safe. And we have currently nine trainers in the district right now who just um, re up their certification. And usually um, bi-monthly, we hold a training to um, either recertify or certify new educators. So it's kind of our process in place. And currently certified educators certify new ones? Yes. That's currently, so we have actually trainers in the district and we pair them up. So, um, for example, um, our high school um, special ed director is a trainer. Um, one of our school psychologists is, we pair them together sometimes, they'll do a training. Then we have elementary folks um, in the same thing, counselors in the elementary school and um, in assistant principals. So they'll, they'll pair. So we typically pair people to do our trainings. So they have a second in there, two, one, um, be thorough about it and to have that second witness in the room sometimes that we did train you and we did go through the policy and all the procedures and we review this policy at those trainings with them so they make sure and Karen does reviews too so that's my intro can I'll I ask sorry for a quick clarification sure. question because I'm terrible at this bi-monthly every two months or twice a month every other month every other month thank you yeah hmm. that's bi-weekly I know. I, I miss it every time. Yeah, that's okay. No, no problem. It just means every other month every we're other offering month. basically a training. And, and then uh, sometimes if we can get people, we do them in the summer. Okay. Um, usually after, after um, summer school, we end at noon. Sometimes we use the afternoon to do that. We try to, throughout the year, we're offering these to make sure we have the right staff trained and as many staff as we can. Thank you. Um, just to be sure, everybody, we, we all have the same thing. I'm hoping that you have a current policy um, in front of you, uh, 430. And then you should have, and, and that one is not colored in anything but dark. You know, it's black. And then you should have the um, first round revision for us tonight um, of 430. And then I also provided chapter 126U under the statute. 
uh, definitions because there's a couple I think we may want to, I'm going to recommend we may want to um, include as well once, once you've had a chance. So a couple things before I jump into the actual substance of the policy, and that is um, this particular policy uh, is very legislative driven, very legal. Um, it is a re priority required by law, so it is a high priority for us. The New Hampshire School Board Association um, put out their go by in September, um, and uh, we last updated our restraint and seclusion in, in um, it looks like the 6th of August of 2018, so it, it has been a while. When you look at the um, current, uh, current policy 430, it has a little asterisk by it, and what that means, you probably know, but just in case, it, this policy is also included as 536.1 on our policy document because the 400s deal with personnel, and of course the 500s deal with students, so it's, it's in two places. Um, Jim asked this question when we first came in, and so um, it was perfect. A lot of the changes that we're going to talk about tonight that are in red are driven recently are driven by Senate Bill 179 and House Bill 491. Um, I do have copies of them if anybody wants to see them. Luckily, they're not very long, but I didn't make them for everybody because really the language I, I checked mirrors the, the law. Um, and so that's, that's what's happening here. Um, there's a lot of red here. Um, I think there should be a, lot, a little more red, but I'll, I'll I apologize because some things should, should, should have been caught in red and I'm still playing with this thing. So what I'd like to do is, is just sort of jump in. Um, I spent the better part of today looking at the older policy and trying to give you, because some of the wording um, goes back and forth, even though it doesn't fall in the same um, uh, category. Ca well, same category. Well, maybe a different category, mm -hmm. but it's a little different. So I can I can give you where the references are, um, because a lot of this, even though the red stuff does look pretty voluminous, um, there's a lot of the same stuff from the old policy as well. And so I just want to be able to point that to you. So starting out with the um, introduction to this, um, I did not, you know, I jumped right in with the. Um, what Sorry. was b before you, referred to as, I guess, Karen, can I pause for you sure. real quick? Before we do this, yeah. um, can John just go through what an example of the whole process from start to finish of the seclusion and restraint might look like? I think so that... that so, so when we follow yeah. along this, yeah. that I can, in my head... So it's... Whether you make up something or just... So it, I give you a scenario, but it... it they all vary, so I just gotta right. say that. Right. So right. there's no, um, <laughs> there's no plan when this when when, when you're in these situations. Okay. So um, child is disruptive, um, really not self-regulating. We've done all of our um, tactics with everything from jumping on a trampoline to riding a bike to swinging on a swing to walking in the playground to you name it. Right. You know, right. standing on our head and doing everything we can to get that child to kind of re-self-regulate any kind of choice activity using use of video, use of things that are comfortable to them, comfortable adults brought into the room that they might know to try to calm them down when they're in these kind of um, situations. So the gamut of a lot of tactics to um, re-regulate um, the child. A lot of zones of regulation, we call, and a lot of stuff is get them down to a lower zone and do some of that work. That's what it does. But at times, they need more of a time to cool off and take some time away and a space away. So we will seclude them into an area. And it may be a cubby area that is theirs. If they are a child with multiple disabilities, often we have like a little office for them. It's a little cubby, like those little, you know, cubbies where they'll go in, they have their personal things in there. Sometimes a, a beanbag chair to go in and just regulate. And sometimes they won't want to stay. So we'll take and maybe have a mat, like a, a gym mat, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll hold it as a barrier because they may be at a point where they're lashing out at staff. Okay. And we would hold that and say, no, you need to stay in this area till you calm. Here's some activities. How can we help you? Low and slow, low and slow, low and slow. And typically, they calm down. 90% of the time, that happens. Sometimes, they may escalate. Really not want to stay in that. Thrashing, hitting, things like that. Um, the team makes a decision. These are people that are trained and certified in CPI. They, they make a decision that we need to help this child self-regulate. We may have to put hands on to move and escort them to another place. We may have to put hands on just to help them calm their hands. Sometimes these aren't, aggr these aren't 
behaviors to hurt you or hurt others that are harming themselves. They're self-injurious and harmful behaviors, whacking their head up against the wall, things like that. We're dealing with some profound, profound disabled children sometimes, and it's holding them till they can self-regulate, and that's what it is. And this, and that happens, you know, doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, we have policy and procedure like we do to what to follow and how to get there. Okay. Okay. How do I do, Barb? You did well. I had like seven different memories yeah, <laughs> yeah. in my life. And, and, Sometimes, and too, with a lot of kids, especially on the autism spectrum, the pressure of being held is a helpful thing. Yes. So, so you know, you walk in and, and a teacher's got a kid, you know, in a bear holder, however they, you know, this is what right. we do, sit, right. you know, and talking and all this. And what are you doing? And the, the child is calming down. Yeah. Um, there's also times where if they're in a big room, you've got 15 other kids, you mm -hmm. can make all the kids leave or you can get the child that's struggling out and find mm -hmm. oftentimes there's just a room Sometimes they're not attractive rooms, which I think we need to address that, but where they can be by themselves. So if they have to scream and yell or do whatever, yep. Yep. they're doing it all by themselves, so they're not in front of anybody. Yeah, and it's well within the law. Yeah. We just mm -hmm. have to document, mm -hmm. and that's what the law says. It says this is not, it doesn't say you can't do it. It doesn't say you shouldn't do it. It says you should document, and then you should meet together and say, hey, what didn't we see? What triggers was what triggers was Joey or Sally having? What do you think maybe next time we should introduce sooner? Or, yeah. you know... What is the conflict they're having with such and such adult that it seems to be when we introduce that adult to their to their their case they go off? What's that conflict? And start and we meet and we talk about these as a as a team mm -hmm. and we kind of for next time hope it doesn't happen. Okay, so a physical restraint would be me hands on holding someone in a bear hug, for example. Oh, yeah. Mechanical restraint would be using a mat. <laughs> No, mechanical, mechanical restraints are more on buses, things like that. Okay. Like we would use a five-point harness because of safety reasons, low torso, um, low, low torso strength, things like that. Okay. Um, sometimes um, with kids that, that seizure and may fall, we'll have, a we'll have a mechanical restraint. No mechanical restraints in schools okay. for reasons of, of controlling kids. That does yeah. not happen. Okay. We do not allow that. That does not happen. Okay. The only mechanical restraint would be that. Me medication restraints are crossed out. We do not use those we here. Use right, those we here. don't use them here. But Department of Health and Human Services for like centers that have kids mm -hmm. allow there it. allow it. Got it. And prone restraint. Mm -hmm. It's prohibited. That's, it's prohibited except for when you're taking a child, say, from a standing position mm -hmm. down to a, a uh, sitting on the floor position in some instances, and and that's one of the exceptions that's included. So is that why it's included in the definition? Yes. yes. Of, okay. Yeah, and I didn't want to. <coughs> I'll wait till we get there, but I. I didn't want to just say we're not going to put it in there. That's your decision as far as the medication. But John and I looked at it and said, let's put it out there for them and they can decide. Yeah. But we do not use medication restraint currently okay. in the district. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand no, 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 no. What, what it may be in that. Okay. Yeah. Question for, for both of you. Because um, Barb has a lot of historical knowledge on this. In terms of what is required by law versus best practices, mm -hmm. would you say that the law is is what you would consider best practice at this time it, it defines pretty well right now the law but the, the best practice is having people trained in in cpi and that's our and that's our, our our that's our method of training people that's the best practice part of it um following the procedure of the law is also a a practice but it's right it's and, and after yeah, okay. it's also it's a, like any any um policy that you have to apply across a broad range you know, your first words were, you can't really give one example because none of them are the same. So early in my career, there was a lot more physical restraints because we just did it. Mm -hmm. And in, in oftentimes there were far less really serious instances because the physical restraint de-escalated it early on. Sometimes being, being not able to do it because we're not supposed to. I mean, ultimately I think it's better. It, it lowers the ability of a teacher to hurt a child, mm -hmm. either purposely or not. Mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. And I will say a lot of... Um, most special ed issues with teachers and students is around a restraint issue mm -hmm. where a parent disagrees with how a child was restrained. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, I think I think child and staff safety is mm -hmm. going to run Paramount. dead heat with best practices. Mm -hmm. It's sort mm -hmm. of a sad piece of special ed, you know? mm -hmm. but you know, you've got you know yeah. those two those two things that are exact. What's yeah. the best way to de-escalate the child, and what's the way to keep the child and the and the teacher safe? Mm -hmm. Safe and not only from injury, but from litigation and that sort of thing. Right. So right. Special sure. and, and, and not always, and, and I want you to think about this too, is not always bad. Right. Not always for reasons that are, yeah. you know, that are, that are always, it's not always acting out behavior. It's not always purposeful behavior. 
and there's just times when we have to help maintain safety for that child because he's not in a place to maintain his own safety. Mm -hmm. Running and, out into yeah, running out into the, the street. That's the worst. That was going to be my like question. That. Is, yeah. is seclusion or restraint preventing someone from going out the door? It can be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the biggest well, reason for putting more, somebody More on in Main Street. Yeah. Depends, depends yeah. where out the door is. Yeah. If the out the door is into a secluded, into an open playground, sometimes, yeah, into a playground that's fenced in, great. Yeah, go. Mm -hmm. cool. um, sometimes out into the, the big. Door broke sometimes in, not such a good thing. right. Sometimes to the big field where they just have to blow off steam and they're going to run a little circle, mm -hmm. and you can maintain it. All the power because the last thing you want to do is hands on. It's your last resort. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. If we can maintain and keep safe there, out into the main road of Crystal McAuliffe, no. Okay. You know, so it's kind of it is gauged by the adults about when does that line cross, and it's done by teams often to make that call, and, and they're okay. trained how to Thank work you. as teams. As part of the CPI training. Yeah. Excellent. So from, Thank you. Both. From my understanding, is that is why the numbers at Chris McAuliffe are higher. Some of the reasons, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Logistically speaking, that's a nightmare of a school mm -hmm. for a kid that's not well regulated. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, just, just parking roads house all over the place. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's so worth thinking. That geography can have an impact so yeah. on your numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It certainly can. So now that they're what you know, the child's calm able to regulate self-regulate now what happens in terms of reporting what would be the next step next step is you it's so in in the policy it, it talks pretty clearly about notification of parent and, right. and by the time but, they go by the time actually in that situation what would what would happen so they the call not regulated they would call well the child's they would call at, or, or yeah they would call the administration the administration would be aware typically um we always ask like so again best practice is not always in the policy. I'll give you the scenario of best practice. What we do is teams of three. There's okay. two people involved in the situation, and a preferred adult usually there is the monitor. Are you okay? Watching the staff, okay. watching, making sure we're all On in a good page. place, in the same page, making sure the child's okay, looking for signs of any kind of health issues. You know, mm -hmm. are they getting jaundiced? Are they, mm -hmm. they look like they're going to throw up? Do they look like something's going to happen? Are, they, are their eyes rolling? Are they seizuring? Things like that. Those are things that happen. Be ready with a walkie-talkie, call the nurse, call someone else, 911 if we have to, if something's mm -hmm. happening during that. That's kind of that third person on. So it's always our typical practice. Okay. We have radios in the building. For that reason, we have walkie-talkies. We're getting more um, in, in doing that. And so while that's occurring, someone is contacting the parent? Mm -hmm. um, after the incident, typically. After the incident, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. Within the, the, the law states that by the time you deliver the, the student to the child, and okay. to the parent, excuse me, the, ch the child to the parent. Okay. So it's by the end of the day. Before that child goes home, we are on the phone talking. Yeah, usually it's much much quicker than that, you know, right. unless it happens at 3 o'clock on the way out the door, right. which is sometimes, mm -hmm. oh, welcome to our world, mm -hmm. you know, that happens sometimes. <coughs> and sometimes transitions are very hard for kids, and, and that's a trigger of why they're triggering right now, and the team's talking about why are transitions so hard for this child. Yeah. Why at three yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Is that helpful? Yes, yes, thank very you. much. Thank Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So the first paragraph um, is is some of the languages. Um, you know, obviously that first line in black is a carryover from the uh, revised. But truly, when you look at the new policy, um, you know, the guidance that came out, we're talking about more safety and dignity of the kids. Uh, we want to use restraint and seclusion only for emergency responses. And there are limitations for both uh, restraint and seclusion that are later outlined within the policy. So that's what that first paragraph does. Um, any, any concerns or questions on that one? Or do you want, do you want me to just, just keep do going? a quick run through? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get there. Okay, definitions would be the next one, and comparing this new version to the old version, um, and this was one of the biggest ones. There were some some new definitions that came out um, that um, were important with regard to, I believe it's seclusion is the biggie. Um, but anyway, these are the definitions that were carried over. Now, you'll notice in the new um, policy, I did not include parent because it wasn't, uh, initially I didn't, because it wasn't in, wasn't a recommended definition from the New Hampshire School Board Association. But I believe my recommendation to you is that we include it because we've recently had questions, especially in the special education area, about step parents. Um, do they fall under the definition of parent? What is our school definition? And so I think it would be good to include the definition from our prior uh, policy that it means a student's parent or legal guardian. 
so if you agree with that. Um, the next one that's not in there that I think is really important is the definition, and it wasn't in our old one, but it, it um, because of the statute that I gave you, I think it should be in this one, is the definition of child. Yes. Um, as you know, there's been a change in the law that now kids can stay in school, especially in the special education uh, program, up until the age of 22. In our old policy, it was student, student, student. And so uh, when I pulled the statute, I was curious about why the change. And why the change is because within the statute, if you look at it under one, um, it defines a child and it also includes a person in actual attendance who's less than 22 years of age and who has not received a high school diploma. So I think my recommendation to you as well is let's include a definition of child. Um, they should be in, assuming you all like this, they should be probably alphabetical. Um, and then the only, the last one that I was looking at um, that I also think you might want to consider putting in here because it is, the term is used later on and we do have an additional reporting requirement is the term serious injury. When you read about serious injury, you might think, what exactly is that? If you turn your, your statute over, uh, 126U1, and you look at the very last, it, it defines what serious injury is. And so in addition to what you currently see in front of you, I would recommend those additional three be included. Um, as was pointed out, uh, we did include uh, medication restraint because it was, it was you know, one of the recommendations from the school board, but Kathleen and I and then John, we discussed it and said we don't use it. We think we should take it out. So that's up to you all to decide, but we would recommend you do so. Mechanical restraint, obviously physical and uh, prone restraint are all defined, and that is new language from our old policy. That's why it's in red. Um, in, the, in the statute here, definition of child over here is a person who's not reached the age of 18 years. Right. Right, but so, go down one more, and then it also includes, if you go down yeah. further after all the statute, but it also yeah, includes also. a person who's in school. Oh, I see. Right, right, right. Yeah, because yeah, so, those special ed kids go in. Yeah. Correct, okay. and that new So if they, were, if they were identified with an IEP, then that. that yes, they can then, stay. Then, in then they're considered a child. Yeah, which, no, that makes, yeah. Well, so, I think that's really, because, <laughs> you know, you think of it, I think of a student, oh, 18, mm -hmm. right. but no, it's really 22, so I think that would be mm -hmm. important to add yeah, if, that, if I, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, so then uh, moving down on the bottom of page one, um, restraint does not include, and this is all old language from our previous policy, um, so it outlines exactly what is but what is not. Um, and um, so I don't know if you have any questions there. Um, going over to page two, again, um, at the very top under the small Roman numeral five, I guess it is, um, anytime you see in the, in the policy himself, herself, he, she, um, I made it pronoun friendly and made it they, them, themselves, whatever it is. And again, the changes there are student to child, and then later on in that top paragraph, he or she to they. Um, a dangerous that makes sense grammatically anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alone. Yeah, it's, yeah. So dangerous restraint techniques are prohibited, and then it outlines what they are. Um, that comes from page two of our of our current policy, um, which is it's Roman numeral four, and it, it's the same language. The only thing I did there was change student to child uh, for consistency, and then the new language at the bottom of page two. Um, you know what I'm looking at? Um, we I use medical restraint there, yeah. medication restraint. Mm -hmm. So we would take out, we would use physical and get rid of that medical restraint. Well, I thought it was supposed to say physical and mechanical. I think it's, um, no, well, actually the go-by is, I think the go-by is definitely, because um, you only use the mechanical on a bus, so. Right, that, well, that was clarified, yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Other forms of physical yeah, and shall be administrated. Uh, so that's one I'll, I'll so continue to look at. Um, so do we cross out in medical? Like so it should just be other forms of physical restraint? Other forms of, yeah. of physical restraint, yeah, shall be administered. Then uh, seclusion is defined there, and that's right out of the SB 179, which I do have a copy of if anybody wants to see it. Now, should all of these definition words be in um, quotations? Uh, we can talk about that if that's what you mean, the, the actual definition. Like restraint in quotations. Yeah. We, so we can, so I think, let's, let's stick to substance for now. And I think okay. we have some technical uh, questions. That it, is that okay if we split them up a little? Mm -hmm. Just tell me. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so then, <laughs> if 
we go to page three, um, after the definition of seclusion ends, I put in an example. Um, this came out from DOE because, um, you know, they, there was a lot of back and forth about what constitutes seclusion and what doesn't. And I, I just leave that to you as to whether or not you want to put that in there um, or if it's just too confusing. But it, it gives an example of what does not constitute seclusion because obviously a child who's in the principal's office, um, you know, and the principal leaves and the child is still sitting in the office, that child, one, isn't escalated per se. They may be nervous, but not escalated in terms of, of um, you know, what we need to do. But um, they, can also, they can also leave that room if they need to. Can I comment on that? Yeah. Sure? So Karen and I went to a, a training with the DOE together, and we went to a couple trainings, but this one in particular, they, they spent a lot of time on this. And the essence of this law, when it talks about, this is during an episode when the child is dysregulated or escalated. So if you say to a child, stay in my office, I'm going to find out more information. Um, say to your admin assistant, need you to keep an eye on him, I'm going to go see Mrs. So-and-so down the room and find out what happened. You're not secluding him. It's like a timeout chair, kind of. It's kind of like you are, you're okay in that office, I'm not. You can't get up and leave, really, because you're going to get more, you'll get more consequences. But the fact is that's not considered a seclusion. There's no right. one there physically the holding you into that, mm -hmm. that, that area or space. Right. And that's, that's been, you know, that's been a lot of fear of educators about, oh my God, I can't leave a kid and mm. tell him to stay, you know, there. And I said, no, that's just part of our social order that sometimes when you say to a child, you need to stay in this area until I go do that. So do you think that's important, from your opinion, to include an example? Mm. I, th I almost think it's confusing. I, I do. I don't think so because yeah. our training talks about this. Yeah. And I yeah. think there's mm -hmm. there's difference between policy and procedure and training. And I, I think policy, it, it's odd to put it in a policy. I'll be, told, I'll be honest. My honest to put examples in a policy? Yeah, it's odd. It mm -hmm. just, it's just because this law is so dense that mm -hmm. the DOE started doing that as examples. And we're like, I just think that we put it in because it's something that was suggested and I said I don't know I don't know if I like it yeah so. yeah this was that but did come for your eyes to look yeah. at so that's I put it in there in case you want it if you don't we can <clears throat> easy well and I would even go so far as to say anytime we define something it should match exactly what's in statute mm -hmm. right as simple as that so right. we don't need to provide examples within a definition section right. because right. we're expanding on what we think the law is okay. talking about I don't know if we want to get into that space Got it. Okay. Page three. Okay. Um, then on page three, we're looking at Roman numeral two, um, training required. As you can see, that is consistent with um, what part of it in the black is consistent with what was there. Um, and then, yeah, there was some additional language that was added from, from the new um, version, if you will. Again, uh, what I did, uh, then you look at Roman numeral three. Um, we do procedures for managing behavior of students. We take, there's some language in the new one uh, about you know, code of conduct, what the expected behavior is, how are we warning kids and, you know, not warning, informing kids and, and um, parents. Um, it also talks about other, you know, accommodations and things on how you manage student behavior that's found in IEPs and 504s and behavioral intervention plans and individual documents and anything that the superintendent feels is necessary to manage student behavior as far as, um, you know, additional documents. So that's new language. Um, Roman number four, of course, comes down to which conditions under restraint may and may not be used. Um, Authorized, obviously, is A, some, some older language, and then they added um, the red. Now, some of that language is, in, is found in um, our older policy, or our, our current policy, if you will. Um, and that one point I made about physical restraint, it, it, uh, if you look at sub -Roman, the little Roman numeral two, you can put, you know, only can use prone position when you're transitioning from one to um, a safer form of restraint, but, um, you know, it's limited. Again, you can't use it for more than what's necessary. I know you all can read that language. And again, everything in red is new. The big point that was stressed in the um, 
legislation was number five, restraint will not be used. We maybe want to say shall not or whatever it is as a form of punishment or discipline. That was part of the real stress behind the legislation. Okay. Um, we're not supposed to, moving down to B, you're not supposed to use restraint um, of a ch for more than 15 minutes without the approval of a supervisory employee. So, for example, my understanding, John, and jump in, is if they're working with a child and that child continues to escalate and it gets past 15 minutes, they're calling admin from the front office and saying, you need to come down. Okay, after 15 minutes. And then if it's um, 30 minutes, again, they need to do further assessment. And so that's the principal who's called. The principal yeah. or the uh, assistant, assistant principal. Okay. Yeah, because a lot director. of those are double headed. As or director, like director of student services at both the middle and the high school, too. Okay. Because so. they would know the child, have a relationship with the family and the child. It's in all these, it's mostly who has the closest relationship with the child, and you want to make sure they're involved in that. You're going to hear that throughout here. You want to make sure that most, it's relationship based and it's know. not. Yeah, it's not. So years ago, Barbara, there used to be teams, right. and you would call like over a thing, code red or code team, yeah. and these people that didn't know the child would kind of show up, and it's just how we did practice. It wasn't the best practice. It's mm -hmm. we've evolved, and I think that that's kind of what this is saying. Is the law really is taking it to say use comfortable people with that child, to train more people, and that's the. Like I said, it's not a bad law in that, in that way to say that. Mm -hmm. That relationship with your kids. Mm -hmm. Karen? Yeah. Do you have RSA 126U11 in front of you? I don't have U. I have I have 126U1. I don't have the whole statute in okay. front of me. No. I'm just curious. When I was, this was a week ago, so um, when I was going through the RSA, I didn't actually see the language around 15 minutes. So I was just, I was like probably skimming it too quickly, but I just wanted yeah. to have that question mark. Like the 15 minute interval and the 30 minute interval, that is in current law. Um, that is actually in our old policy. Um, I will look at that. That's a great question. Yeah, because it's definitely, it, it was back. part of our existing policy, but when I was looking at the RSA, I didn't actually see any time limits, and so mm -hmm. I didn't know. I mean, from what I understand, the RSA allows us to determine the details of our, of our process. Right. Um, and so my question would be, if it's not required by RSA, is that a best practice? Is that something you want to explore, change? Are those time intervals appropriate? That's consistent with CPI training. Okay. So that's also, I was a former trainer. That's okay. why I, I didn't know that. That's, that's consistent with the training. Of, that's, that's good. If you have to do that, it's plenty of time. Okay. And if it's not, you're calling the parents typically and you're saying, he's not coming. Where do you want us to go from here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You know, it's usually a very involved conversation at that point. Sure. Back to that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Page four, number two, obviously that goes into the, the limited use of mechanical restraints, and that's when you're when you're transporting a child, um, and the reasons you can do it. Uh, you'll see later on that if you do it, you then are required to report having done it. Um, so, and that's in that lower paragraph when whenever a child is transported using mechanical restraints, the designee or superintendent will in writing the reasons for the for the restraint. Okay, so that's that's it on the first part of the restraint. Oh, can, I, can I pause there? Sure. That's in in a child's IEP. It's right. directly right. written in there with that language. Because yeah, a lot of students and, are always buckled in. Yeah, and our reporting yeah. is that we have this as part of the New Hampshire um, reporting system through IEPs. So we do document this and have parents sign off and permission. On Every that. time the child is transported. It's for the year. It's for the oh, year. Oh, okay. It's that's a yearly it. annual thing, and we go over <laughs> what would happen uh, for them. We communicate with Terry Karate about. What restraint? What, what's needed on the bus? And for example, I have a child that needs a. Um, they're small in stature. They're older, but they're small. So they need a. They need an elevated car seat because mm -hmm. of transportation. So today I talked to him and said, "Hey Terry, we got the situation. We're so getting the specs to order it." The language says case specific circumstances. Are you right. thinking that in terms of like the case of the student generally? Yeah. Because yeah. when I first read it, to me it means like in that moment, no. and then case by <laughs> case basis. Case is case by case basis. Which is the per the child is the case. The yeah. child is right. So yes. it's not like you're on the fly every day coming no. up with something new. It's no, it is it is planned. It is scheduled. It's what we do. We communicate with the bus company, make sure that proper things are in place. Mm -hmm. to transport the child. So John, if you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier a child on a swing, would that be a physical restraint? Because I would assume that on many cases that would have 
a safety buckle or anything, or is that no. something that's included? That's, that's included as part of every every child could use it, and every mm -hmm. child would need that, so it's not really considered a All right, so it's not a unique thing. It's not for a that unique case. Okay. case for that kid. You got to think about Thank that, you. like universal. Like we just put in that new um, um, wheelchair swing over at Broken Ground about a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and that has straps on it because it's an open swing that moves pretty fast, and if mm -hmm. it didn't, we'd have kids bouncing. <laughs> so we have to make sure that's that's. Right, it's not considered mm -hmm. a restraint. It's part of the, the ride, if you say in that, in that mm -hmm. case. Thank yeah. you. Is there a better term for case-specific circumstances? <coughs> Should we say uh, accommodations or no? We I think that is, okay. in terms of we would understand that as special educators, so I think that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so coming down to um, use of seclusion now. Circumstances under which seclusion may and may not be used. That's consistent with what was in our uh, what's in our current policy. I should have under small Roman numeral two. The second seclusion should be in red. And then there's a small language change at the end of that sentence under sub under the little two where it says may only continue until the danger has passed. Um, they changed that to dissipated. Um, I don't know if we go with simple. It's the same thing, but I just want to point it out. Um, otherwise, that language is consistent. If you go down to the next Roman numeral, which is wouldn't past be yeah. spelled P A S, -S E D? Yes. <laughs> yes. What's that? Yes, it would. Past. Yes, it would. What did I do? It's no longer spelled past P A S T. It should be P A S S E D. We're going to keep it. Past. Oh, gotcha. It's past. in the past. But I, yes. Yep. But I think it should be so, the same verbiage as the statute. Dissipated. Yeah. yeah. Dissipated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The statute says dissipated. I agree. Go with dissipated. Oh, okay. Got it. We don't need the little words. Exactly. Okay. Well, and, yeah, and we definitely don't want ambiguity where we it may appear that we're getting squirrely with the with the law. Yeah. Okay. So the conditions of seclusion, brand new, but um, it, you know they they talk about the room um, has you know it, when I read it I was like wow and but this is probably in the past where smaller rooms padded lower ceilings smaller dimensions. I remember them all. Yep. And so this clearly outlines. Um, you know what we have to have um, and then there's the requirement that seclusion be directly continuously visually and auditorily monitored by a person trained in the safe use of seclusion that's at the top of page five I can tell you right now if, if you're following the legislature there they may mandate that we tape it oh, that's what's please next no. please no so mm. it's the changes are coming. Child privacy wouldn't be that's what's coming up. yeah they, that's one side of it but so um, this is a new part, number uh, Roman numeral, you're going to test me here, seven, five, six, seven, required use of co-regulators. That is new, um, but it is a requirement. Um, and then, um, again. That's the third person I spoke of, usually on scene to, to, to watch oh, so and that monitor. Doesn't count as a train. They are trained also, but they're also co-regulators. They're watching for signs of um, known to the staff, positive person that they're, or, or trained in trauma-informed care. So sh is, should it be like trained, correct? No? No. no. And A through D are, you know, kind of the people that can act as the co-regulator. But, John, you know where it says a trusted adult selected by the child? Is that done ahead of time? Because, mm -hmm. okay. All right. And, and often it's often it's the the um, educational assistant who has the best relationship with the child. It often just they, you know, and... and, and I was explaining, and, and Barbara agreed, like in the past we used to have like these teams that would do this kind of thing, and it wouldn't be, you'd train only like four or five people in your building, right. and they, so would, they would go, they would go in, 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 in like almost like mm -hmm. the, the, the crew coming in to take care of it. That's not the most trauma-informed way right. of doing things. Absolutely. And we've Especially learned, when you have non-rebel kids who often right. are the ones that get dysregulated because they right. can't. And they don't know the communication device yeah. and all those things. So, so it's always, you spend a lot of time in the beginning of the year yeah. putting their posse together. So, yeah. like I said, another good thing is law. This makes our team kind of, that no kids may be, um, may possibly be someone that in the course of the year might end up in this. We identify these roles. Who is their trusted adults? Who are these people? And we identify those. Okay. And they're trained. And they're trained. Yeah. All right. Uh, report and notification. Obviously, that's new language. Um, I did check the word um, in the second one, I guess it's the second sentence near the bottom. It talks about 
a seclusion restraint may be present within a single occurrence and should be individually described within the reports and notification. Um, believe it or not, I, didn't, I don't know if you want to put this in the definition section. It may be a little too much, but you can have an incident, but then within that incident, you can have several occurrences. So they actually separate the definition of incident and occurrences, but this is the proper use of an occurrence within an incident. So um, that is that is correct verbiage under the, the statute. And then uh, moving on next, I did renumber this next one. It should be eight instead of uh, what it's currently because we switched around so many times. Reporting notification and record keeping requirements. Um, yeah, a lot of the same language. Uh, the, this was asked about earlier. First, there has to be the immediate verbal report to the principal, the, their designee, or, the current, or a current supervising employee. Um, that first sentence should be in red um, immediately after the occurrence of seclusion or restraint, right before and any threat to safety and, and any threat to safety is no longer imminent. And then the rest of that is should have been in red too. But it's the same meaning when I looked at it in our old policy on page four under Roman numeral 1x, but they switched, they switched the order, but it is a change, so I will make that all red. Um, then the initial notification to parents, um, again, same thing. We have a lot of this language throughout our older, but, um, you know, the, 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 the meaning is the same. It's just been pulled in different directions, but we do notify parents. Um, and as John said, no later than the time that the child is returned to the parent or guardian at the end of the business day. They call, they try and call right away, but sometimes they can't reach them. Written notification to the superintendent has to occur within five days of either um, an episode of seclusion or restraint. And then that's all, uh, there are some new forms that are gonna be, have been released by both uh, DOE and Department of Homeland, uh, DHSS. Um, and so that's that new requirement there. Then um, written information goes to the parents. So you've already notified them verbally, but then you have to follow up with a written notification within two business days. Um, and you do that by mail, first class mail. You can do it electronically to either the parent or the guardian. And um, you include you know, all the information as to what occurred. Um, B does talk to about, and this is what I referred to, and why I think we should put um, you know, injury or death, we're going to hear about this. Uh, additional reporting required for injury or death of a child subject to restraint or seclusion. And within that, depart within that paragraph, obviously, all new language, it talks about serious injury. Um, then the additional documentation regarding use of mechanical restraints. Um, if we do it on the buses, we still have to, um, you know, document the reasons we're doing it. D uh, is pretty much the same in this. Um, again, you, if you have intentional physical contact between an employee and a student, um, then we still have a reporting requirement uh, and documentation. I'll Motors give an example of that. I was famous as this is a former principal. I would grab a child by the hand and say, let's go. And I would help them with me to have a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you know when they did some refusal of going, um, didn't restrain them. They came willingly, but I did have them by the hand for their because they were escalated and going to either harm someone else or the rest of the time. So great, have done it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Come happen. I have to make sure I document and record it as I would have done in the past. But yeah, okay. just that that's happening. If I put my hands on your child, I'm telling you. And once you do, then there's now a and written reporting the, requirement. Yeah, what is the documentation? What is it's that? right here. It's under number two. Yep. You have to do the date and time of the incident, description of what happened uh, before, during, and after, the names of the persons involved. Did a you brief have like an online yeah. incidents mm -hmm. report? We have an incident report, yeah. Yeah, yeah. online. Yeah, and yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's very... And in fact, the forms were, when you initially sent out, there's two forms, right? There's a physical contact form and then an incident form that was... Currently. Yeah. Yeah. And Hand. There, it's no. it's a PDF, but it's fillable, form fillable. Oh, oh, okay. okay, um, okay. So okay. it's it's out there. I don't. It just didn't make it into the folder. Uh, next is the circumstances room reporting notification is not required. A lot of that is the same, um, you know, from our old policy, uh, which was good, all the way down to we're on page seven. 
uh, nothing we get to the retention of records there that is all new that should be read that language um, wait I think, I'm sorry what you should be on I'm sorry I go if you go to the top of page seven okay we're at you follow over when you don't have to report notification is not required and then the next one where it talks about retention of records mm -hmm. okay that should be um, that should all be read that is not included in our current policy um, it's also I have I have alluded to our additional board policy 249 which is data records and retention which has a small portion that that you know refers here so like we've done in other policies any policy that um, comes across in this policy I have noted it in the back of this as a reference so we have some crossover and I can add to those in a little while um, we do have mandatory reporting of violation by others this is also new um, and in that within that policy um, we have two that it within within this current I'm sorry requirement we currently have two policies number one is 431 this is professional expectations and basically it will say um, that if a, one of our credentialed educators or someone sees a, an episode of restraint or seclusion that is done illegally or wrong, wrongfully they have a duty to report um, and also 537 because in some cases it could fall under abuse and neglect under 530, so 537 that's a repeat so um, that's included there um, and then of course uh, the ones that follow these are all new the complaints of the violation um, and what it must contain if someone wants to do a complaint and then the investigation and resolution of the complaint um, they are still because we change paragraphs I will fix once we move things around because I suspect there'll be feedback will I will make sure they're properly in you know Roman numeral order um, we did include the investigation and resolution of complaint and that goes on to the last page I will be honest and tell you that in accordance with the go by that the New Hampshire School Board Association provided they say that um, this whole investigation portion that was included here that they recommended um, they say that schools shall document let me see where it is uh, they say it's not none all, not all of this is required it's not in the statute but because DOE um, could come back and ask us for it we should be doing it um, and so they highly recommend it but if you all looked at this and you wanted to pare that down um, I did pare it down from what would they included but um, it's certainly Kathleen looked at it and thought it was appropriate and so that's why it's in there and then we're talking we're talking specifically about section 14 sorry I'm lost again no nope, that's okay yeah, section investigation and resolution it's now yeah. it, it's it so, was 14 it's at 12 yes investigation and resolution on page 7 investigation yep. and resolution of complaint is all new language and it's all recommendations from the school board association yes okay. pared down it's pared down Dude, don't even get me started over there Liz <laughs> yep so uh, just that that is really we talked about common practice. That was a conversation yeah. we said common practice. That's common practice. I, I have been for many years mm -hmm. the person that if something came up and said now that like, you know, Karen and I would work in tandem, you know, and something like that. And we do now. That that is our pretty much our practice that is defined. It's pretty consistent what I would do if someone called and if if I got an email or a complaint from a parent or it about the process that we're saying how we do exactly what this kind of has. Mm -hmm. Currently, this is a new practice. As much of this policy focuses on documenting what you did as it focuses on how to do what you're supposed to do, right. which is the nature of special ed, but so much of, because it's such a tenuous thing, um, you, yeah, you need, a, you need a degree from Katie Gibbs along with a special ed degree. Uh, you all know Katie Gibbs is a secretarial school. Yeah. But, I, you know, there's so much that you have to, forms to, that you have to know to fill out and keep on top of all that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So let, can I ask um, the requirements of this section? You know, they're not required by law, but you do have limitations on the number of business days between um, different parts of the process. Do you want to restrict yourself in that way? It, do you, you know if you if we set this in policy and then you don't get it done in five business days? We typically do. Yeah. 
We do. So yeah. it, I mean, it's just a question. Yeah, yeah. there no, are things. I feel like it, as it, much as it's hard, it yeah, yeah. it's hard to do clear. it so it gets done. Yeah, it, it, oh, it, it doesn't really matter when we do it, or yeah. we have to yeah. a month. Then yeah. a month later, it's coming from a family member or or a fellow staff member. You want to be timely on this one. Mm -hmm. um, I think you really do want to be. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying I, I think we should be timely. I'm saying I'm just putting it out there that right, right. If, if, if we're in a position yeah. of being able to set our own timelines because it's not required in the RSA. Right, I agree with Kara. But then do we even want to say, if we wanted to keep specific days, mm -hmm. do we want to say in most cases or word verbiage like that? I would think we'd want to say 20 days, yeah. not like in most cases, should be completed. We don't want to say that. We want to say it will be completed in 20 days. We want to make that policy. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. We're either saying we. It's another safety measure. As tedious as it is, mm -hmm. and as controlling as it seems. Mm -hmm. it's, yep. it's and when DOE reaches down and says, because they get a complaint, we better have our. We, just, we, we need our documentation to show that we did our due diligence. Sure. Mm -hmm. So. And I mean, I'm mm -hmm. I'm fine with adding more paperwork. I love it. Um, I mean, you know, it's accountability, it's responsibility. I think it's great that we're setting expectations for ourselves district wide. I'm just saying, in any time when it's not required by law, maybe we just take a minute and think, do we want to restrict ourselves in this way? Because, a lot of feedback you know, John is a no. superstar and he may someday no. decide to retire to a beach and someone else comes in and is like, this is crazy, not this yet. is too much. So, <laughs> so um, much of, you know, there's so many. Every, every bit of special ed has a number of days you have to get things done. Mm -hmm. So there's not one special educator on the planet that will look at a time restraint and be like, oh my God. Okay. So everything. It's good to know. And, and, yep. and it's and very and timely I may, driven. This yeah. may come to Kathleen. I, I might designate, for example, you know, Cynthia, you know, Cynthia Liska, my, my, my um, special ed director at the middle school. Kathleen may designate her to do the investigation mm -hmm. because she's closest to the situation and the people. Mm -hmm. It may not always be me. I mean, it depends on okay. the situation where it is. So it, it doesn't, this doesn't always fall on one person. This falls on sometimes I may utilize another administrator to do the initial investigation mm -hmm. and oversee it. And that can happen too. It's okay. up to her to designate on the situation where she thinks the best investigation should go. But okay. just to, to follow up on that, you would want to have the complaint will be completed within 20 days. <sighs> unless an extension is approved directly by the superintendent. Correct. You know, because that gives you... Correct. So if you hit that 20 days mm -hmm. and it just happens to be over Christmas and New yeah. Year's and there's things going, I'd like to, to pursue into what both Liz and, and Kara pointed, you might want to give yourself leeway. that one leeway. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, Barb, if that would be... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, there's always Acceptable. extenuating circumstances. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's consistent with special ed that we often, like for an, like for a, a three-year evaluation, if it's we, we're, we have to get yeah, done a certain amount of times, if we don't, we have the law allows us for another 30-day extension. Right. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, if you, it just I, happens. Even because if it's scheduled in time, you can, yeah, you yeah. Get, you have to, everyone has to sign so off that it's okay. On it, but yeah. that's you have to say that you asked for an extension. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I, that, I would, that process would be, well, also would not be inconsistent with right. special ed process. And, and I think what actually end up being more clear to Liz's point than just saying in most cases yeah, right. mm -hmm. it should be completed because mm -hmm. what you're what you've done is you've built some a soft landing into your language yeah. when you could just be explicit that in circumstances that require an extension they can be yeah. super mm -hmm. yeah. this will be done within 20 days unless an extension is granted mm -hmm. by the superintendent yeah. right. I would put the same something thing like the that. reasons for the extension should will be included in the final investigative report, mm -hmm. yep. not should be. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah. that's you, good. That, and that does it. It's, you never know something it, can come up that puts a wrench in the works. Right. And, and, some, and, and, and sometimes it could be the student and their family could be gone or, right. or have something yep. that they're right. yep. Well, yeah, or right. a, a vacation the, the falls, yeah. Yeah. snow day, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, it happens. Yeah. So then, Karen, I would think in going down the whole thing, all the should be's should mm -hmm. be taken out. Under that section Under you're talking that about? Section. Under yeah. section 14. Under probably all sections. Mm -hmm. but. Okay. Right. And we've had conversations about passive versus active language in other meetings. Okay. We mm -hmm. can certainly revisit that in our conversation later. Should be contacted. So the complainant should be contacted. You want it to be sh shall be? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shall. Okay. Got it. All right. 
Um, then the, just the last three sections, um, if, a child, if, a, yeah, if a child has an IEP or a 504 and you use a restraint or seclusion on them um, for the first time, and they're, uh, you're supposed to go ahead and go back and do, is it called a manifestation hearing? Where mm -hmm. you just look at it, just you're supposed just to have to a meeting to see if there are any other accommodations or things that can be put in place that aren't in place as to what helped, you know, what caused the escalation, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So if they're already identified, um, they add that additional requirement that you go back and make sure that um, you, so, know, you do the adjustments if needed. So can I ask, that wasn't in our former policy? No, I didn't see it, but it could. Yeah, that that was in the former law. That that's been around. Yeah, let me look on the that's been around mm -hmm. since 2018 when the first original law came in. Because I wrote the original policy formally, and it was in my district. Yeah, well. no, you're right. School school review following use of restraint. Um, first time with a student who's receiving services. Yeah. So that shouldn't be red. That should no, be black. So that's been in the law. Yeah. And that's so our practice. Good. That's mm -hmm. been common black practice. To okay. Um, obviously, no, it, you know. You can't be harassed or retaliated against if you file a complaint in good faith um, with regard to, you know, seeing something that you think was wrong um, or in violation of the statute. And then the, dim the dissemination of the policy, we're going to make sure this is on our website and we'll refer to it uh, in each of the student parent handbooks at each of the schools per year. We have a list of about 12 policies we make sure that are in this parent, the student parent handbooks, they're really important, and this is one of them. And then the legal references um, on yours, as I was going back through it again today and, and making again some more, I can fine tune this until the cows come home, but I did include all of the district policies that come into play, um, you know, through some of our processes. Those were the, the big changes. I did add, um, 12, ED 120202 02 ECHO, and I can tell you exactly why in a minute if you need me to. But otherwise, um, they're, they're listed. So just a couple. There's a total of six policies that, in addition to this one, that need to be added under the references section. So under the training, just one question, just going back to training. Yeah. If CPI is used, is that a recommendation to cite CPI? It's not, it cuts there's, there's. The only reason I'm asking that is because I really like Tom Merrimack for years. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, John knows that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very clear. I mean, I, it here, it doesn't... here is the problem with policy. You put in, we did that at the time because that was where we were. What if. What if something happens yeah. and the methods in CPI also become bad? And I agree. Yeah, no, no. And, that's and, I'm and, just and saying like, um, you know, saying that like basically, you know, CPI, either CPI is hold and a child keeps getting hurt and we do that hold. We would no longer do that. Mm -hmm. In that way, we would have to adapt and adjust and maybe look for another. There's other um, programs out there too. There's there's multiple programs out there. Do it. CPI is the most common in the field um, okay. to do that. So we currently use it. I'd be cautious to put it into policy. I did it once and I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> I love that for, for an answer that, okay. that I think you restrict yourself to a company. And I try to say from, from they are a company. Okay. And now they are a conglomerate that gets, quite frankly, a lot of money out of us because we have now embedded it in our practice. And right. that. Okay. So um, that's why that there may be a better um, solution that's more trauma informed that comes along that I'm always looking for mm -hmm. um, that we may decide to do that that meets the requirement of the law. So that's why I would just advise against it. Got it. Currently now I think it's the best in the, in the in practice in the field and that's why in two different districts I've pushed it forward. <laughs> so that's the first run through. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions further questions about the substance that we just went over. They have questions about the various restraints, the process of seclusion, anything like that? Or do we all want to let it steep for a little while? Um, I don't have questions on that. I, I did have a question on the very, very, very last thing. Uh, what, tell me about Tell uh, me about that. Adopted October 6, 2023, revised December 6, 2010. So we adopted it and went into the past to revise it? Just We adopted it and 
Oh, I'm sorry. This is I'm sorry. No, that should be that should be revised. That's when we were first were going to bring it to the board, believe it or not. Yeah. And I try and plan it out as to first second reading my bus. So, nope. Okay, I just want to no, and this great. may come at another topic which it's is segue. our conventions yes. as to yes. you know, what is the way that's clearest do we when is something adopted and when is it revised? And when does a new policy adopted and how much of a revision does it have to be before we say it's your buy or adopted mm -hmm. so usually the way we've done it in the past because I did the matrix it's the first time it's actually brought into the board and approved so it, as a policy so it'd be more like adopted 1998 right <laughs> Or and, and then, then revised and then in revised. 2010, Correct. 2018, and after. I've okay. seen them as ba way, okay. way early, like 1961, mm -hmm. believe so, it or not. And that's that's fine. I just wanted, I just wanted us to set a convention, yeah. but yes. I know that's later topic. Yeah. Yes, well, and well, it can also be relevant to now what I'm going to ask is, does anybody have any technical questions about the way that the policy is written, formatted? Does anybody want to talk about that? Had a couple of questions. I have a lot of questions about that, but I was just going to along that because I don't know if we want to go into all of those things. As an example, I brought Merrimack School Board's policy on physical restraint and seclusion, but just looking at all of their policies are formatted all very nicely. Very, it, it's to me personally, it just seems easier to follow along the bullet points. I don't know if at Merrimack they use a program to create these. Mm, no. They just all a, look just the a same. consistent format that we And mean. then at the mm -hmm. end, yeah. everything has a first reading, second reading, review, review, I adoption have, like, every single time. Mm -hmm. Who did them? Did you have somebody our, who actually did them? Our, our Bridget, our first mm -hmm. Bridget. Yeah, unfortunately. It was the, it was the we don't have a Bridget. Yeah, we don't have a Bridget. But this Lyndon, is, mm. Lyndon used to do it, and Lyndon retired, and those duties went away. Yeah. I'm your, I'm your secretary, but quite frankly, um, I'm not an executive secretary. Um, so, yeah. so course. we're going back and mm -hmm. forth. So we really but do. I mean, and we need to talk set about up. that internally, yes. though, about kind of. Yeah. 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 I do have Sorry. one more. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Just, uh, yeah. Mr. Richards has a comment. Yep. I just have one more substance thing, and I, I, we were going along, so I didn't bring it up. But on page five, yeah. when you say, threat to safety is no longer imminent, that's Correct. a new thing. Is that the legal language? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that if we're... It's the de-escalation. Yep. Well, okay. Good. I just wanted to make sure it was the language. That's special. I'd speak a little bit. Okay. Right there, mm -hmm. but that is in the law now, and that okay. is the way we say that there's no more fault. No That's more fine. Yep. That's fine. I just wanted and to make sure. Yeah. It was it. I think any occasion we can where we, we have time to use plain language where it isn't restricted by law and definitions. I, I, I think it's good to make note of terminology that we can make not so special ed speak or district speak mm -hmm. because particularly a policy like this, a parent might be uniquely interested and, and want to understand it and, uh, and want to follow along. So um, it's a good point, but it's in the law. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the, the technical aspects, I do want to note that as with a lot of the policies that we've seen um, recently, things are getting a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to make note of that. If there's ways that we can make our language more succinct, that would be great. I don't know if it's possible, given that we're modeling it after RSA. Um, obviously, the content is important. Um, I do just want to make that point that it is getting that much longer. Um, I also will say I know that we're not done with technical edits um, because we're still moving through the draft process, mm -hmm. but there are references to sections above and below, right? And in and sometimes in letters and sometimes in numbers. Right. So I would say this entire document needs a wholesale replacement or review of the cit internal citations. Um, there, you know, if it refers to a section blank we need to fill that in if right. it refers to a section c and there is no section c i've so, done it you just don't have it in front of you okay. i did it today so i will say so. the next time we see this draft i would like to have all of those citations pointing to a real place yeah. um, and then also particularly in the language that we borrow from the school board association it tend not it, it tends not to be numbered and right. so, for instance, that language, if we are going to keep it, if we're happy to have it, should be, the paragraphs shouldn't just float. They should be 
numbered in some way, A, B, C. Right. So this is, I feel that this, something like this, is much more easy to follow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're looking up and down mm -hmm. and on the sides. Yeah. Do you want me to... I'll see it afterwards because I agree because yeah. yeah. one of the things I was going to bring up is I'm having a hard time following when there's a one yeah. Yeah. but sometimes there's a B mm -hmm. and sometimes there's a and it's like okay it's section X and the next sub thing is an A but mm -hmm. on another one it's section you know, you know yeah, the, X the, I and the sub thing is a you know capital A or right. a Roman numeral, or and I think we just need to be, you know. So we have A, B, C, item. one, two, three, yeah, Roman numerals, A, B, C, so that's even yeah. included together. There, yeah, yeah. There, there's a, yeah. There, it's, so, so it's a pretty use, all over the place thing. It's not the work when you, oh, no, 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 when you put things together. Need to set up no, but it's you, what we need to set up yeah. or find yeah. some, I don't, right. I don't know, mm -hmm. if there are yeah. these programs, I'm understanding that there are policy programs. Maybe that's a cost. Maybe who knows? Yeah. But that then can track that for you. Yeah, the can see the edits, and we don't have to keep doing hand scribing yeah. edits where yeah. we can see it live she put up here for when it's now. edited. You know, like in SharePoint, is this something that we could even do in SharePoint where we can do some of these edits ahead of time, where we are commenting? Well, so we, my first meeting last year on this committee, we did just that. I added a bunch of technical updates in SharePoint. Um, but because we don't have good internal tracking, yeah, we don't that know. document was then marked up, and then that document ended up, fall, you know, finding its way forward. Whereas that's not my intention. My intention was just to make notes. Right. So even if we choose to do that, I think we have to establish a convention, a rule, uh, which is what a great way to segue into our, <laughs> our next conversation. Which is by the way, but, thank you for preparing. Yes. That. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not you. You guys. I'm not a world team rose, so don't, I don't take it personally. The one thing, though, is please keep in mind, um, I know, I think it was, there has been requests on the major, maybe I've understood this, but on the full board, they want to see every single change. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. So, and that so needs to be part of the means, convention as well. So for instance. it has to be black or red and, and literally yeah. sitting there and comparing word yes. for word. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, because a lot of the language, I was like, do I take the old one, cross out all the language, add in the sentence, and then make that one red and then add in the black. I mean, you talk about long documents, you're yeah, going to have right. a book. Mm -hmm. Well, then it well, just seems inefficient. Right, so yeah. there, there are options yeah. for when you are significantly changing the text to essentially repeal and replace, right? So then you ask the board to look at the original document and then do document. And if they want to run a compare analysis and see what's different, then, then that's on them. Um, that would be an example of something where if we're really revamping the entire thing and there's only like four words left of the former yeah. sentence. So, you know, there are, there are ways to do it without making it so visually crazy. Because um, the intention of showing every single change is so that the board knows what they're voting on, right? So every single word does matter, um, even if it is a little difficult sometimes when we're doing big chunks of changes. So, Liz, you brought it up, so I wanted to mention it. One of the goals for this year when we were, got together at the retreat was to um, essentially figure out how to track our policies so that we can see draft changes over time and we can preserve previous drafts. Um, you had mentioned that there are tracking tools that we could purchase um, that would do that for us. I don't know if that's a road we want to go down, and also I don't know how much time that will take and if we need a stopgap now um, until we investigate what kind of tracking tool yeah. we might want to use. I don't know. I'm just throwing these things out. In terms of compliance mm -hmm. and efficiency, because it's I just feel like it's a waste of our time to try to be looking at all of these edits, handwriting things. Well, and for you to be making a on-the-fly decision of should it be red, should it be black, right? Yes. If it's a change, it, it should, it should just, red. you should change something. It should automatically jump into red mm -hmm. until well, you accept the change too. I mean, overall through a vote. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and making absolutely. sure that she knows when things need to be updated and that someone can follow up on her work. Mm -hmm. And I do like, you know, I kind of like the first reading, second reading, at least on the most recent, you know, revision. Yeah. Because I think that Claire, yeah, there are times we've sat here and said, is this the second reading? Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, so 
that mean that brings me to something I've been thinking about, which is, you know, I used to work in the legislative environment drafting bills. So we had tools to do that, but we also just had a drafting manual mm -hmm. and we had naming conventions and everybody agreed to it. And so there were no surprises. If you were looking at a document that said, you know, redraft, you knew exactly where it was in the process, right? These, these documents, they're in, they're in a life cycle, right? Mm -hmm. They are going from former to new and there's stages in between where they have to be prepared for committee, prepared for the full board, back to committee, back to the full board. So it does get confusing and these conventions really can help. Um, we had talked briefly last year about maybe forming a subcommittee of people that are interested in creating those conventions. I feel like our committee is quite small. Um, our subcommittee would need at least two people. Obviously, mm -hmm. I would volunteer to be on it. So I guess I would put it to the group. Is this something that as a full committee we're interested in hashing out? Is it something that we just want to say, Kathleen, go do this thing and come back to us with a proposal for a drafting manual, for naming conventions, whatever. Like how much in the weeds do we want to be on this point? I'm not the most qualified to be doing this based on my experience and you know I think as you talk I'm like wow that makes sense that's good but it's not something that I have done a lot of mm -hmm. so I'm going to defer I'd like to review that but I, I'm going to defer this to either someone administratively or, or at all I mean I'll sit here and go through this but I, I'm just going to tell you I'm not I don't have experience in this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pretend You know that it I when do. you see it, but you don't want right. to build it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pretend that I'm like, oh, yeah, we need to do this and this because I, that's not. Do we have any information on what other school boards do, what other districts around she has this issue? That's a no, I don't know great if question. Merrimack, mm -hmm. but I reached out to the Merrimack. Merrimack. Well, yeah, so my thoughts mm -hmm. are that we, that's a place to start. Mm -hmm. Why we create work that maybe somebody else did. Mm -hmm. said, oh, we did that here. Yeah. Well, there's clearly some naming convention because yeah. this is this is – policy JKAA. Oh, yeah. We, we definitely have. Mm -hmm. And if you look on their website, you go to J, oh, yeah. right? And everything is followed along. Oh, I can't it was there for... Yeah. That was how they just did it. It was like, there before I got there. Yeah, I mean, this mm -hmm. is their website, so... I mean, we, we really are policies stayed in a three-ring binder for years. In well, and remember, <laughs> unfortunately, our policies are numbered. They're yes. not letters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, there's a historical reason for that. Dean, our general counsel, told me about. So, you know, we, we are then, okay, what's our number compared to the, yeah. they're using the exact that, that New Hampshire School me. Board Association yeah. we letters. Use this, we use it. Those come from New yeah. so, there we go. so, so there do we have to, do we have to stay with numbers? I, I don't. Uh, we can ask. I don't think so, as long as we're consistent in changing them, and mm -hmm. that in itself is a, probably a, a very endeavor. large endeavor. Yeah, we'd have to look into is that. Is there? I mean, I, I don't know this in Maryland long enough, but is there like um, board? Since you're a unique board in, in a lot of ways, with, with the the way you're formed and with the charter and the, is there bylaws somewhere? Is there something that is a guiding historical document? I don't know of anything. That's no, right. I don't not that I know. No. Not no. charter wise, no. and. No. I don't know if, I mean, this is way before I was here as yeah. to when they started using numbers and maybe they just said, okay, the 100 series is going to be this and the 200 series is going to be this and then we just put, there was a they fallout. just there put was them a in. Fallout. Yeah. There are two schools, two or three, mm -hmm. excuse me, two or three districts at most that use the, the numbers and we're one of them. Hmm. Everybody else uses them. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, it's just, the, I mean, it could be just like, okay, do you need to drive on the right side of the road or the left side mm -hmm. of the road? It's whatever was picked way back and everybody there was kind a, of stuck There was with a falling it. out, Jim. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, and I think, hmm. so renumbering our entire um, set of policies is a big endeavor because of internal citations especially, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, and so we don't necessarily have to go that far. But to Barb's point, there are... You know, the state has drafting manuals, mm -hmm. agencies have drafting manuals, other other boards and bodies that do similar policy work right. already have naming conventions, drafting conventions. You know, sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're down to like font and font size. And, you know, we may not want to get that far in the weeds, but I think I've noticed that we are just, we're struggling. Mm -hmm. And, and, not only is it our responsibility to be clear to the full board what we are doing and changing, but we're responsible to the people of the district that are, are trying to find answers in these policies. 
And so I do think it's important enough that we spend some real time on it. I'm happy to pull some examples from other districts um, that feel like they're doing it well, if anybody else wants to inquire, if they know somebody that they think is doing, and maybe like that's our agenda next time, mm -hmm. is we just, we review what we consider to be naming conventions, organi you know, and we actually put the website up and see how people view our policies, mm -hmm. yes. which are in a yeah. Google shared doc, right? Right, yeah. um, which that's challenging to follow along. Right. Which is yeah. challenging. Okay, I'll reach out to Merrimack and find out do they have a manual. Okay. Um, that would the, be great. Be great. Yeah, what, what you see is really easy to follow. Yeah. So the person that's been doing it has been doing it for... Right. This is their we'll website. Work. We're, right. we're, we're yeah. close to 40 years she's been in that position. So yeah. I think right. that... Um, you click on the each so section, she's, and she's then under each correct. section, yeah. it's she's a great clear person, here, yeah. but she the just knows convention it. And That's what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like so a web page? I think that'd be a great this idea. Is there a web page? Yeah. Yeah. Like I think that's a great awesome. approach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I, I, think, I think so, too, because I agree with Liz that everyone is... I think everyone, when we look at it, just like when any time you need to update a website, you're like, ooh, this is going to be such a big project, but... I think we've gotten to the point where it needs to get done, and I feel like it's something that we can we are, do. Do we have where Where are we at with policies ahead of us that need revision and rewrite? Attention. Do we have a lot? Or? Yeah, we have. Uh, there's right now the next ones are supposed to be fiscal, and I have seven waiting that I I worked through under the fiscal. Under fiscal, and then there's there's ten more, but they got moved into the 900 series as part of the federal grants program. Okay. So they're done. They they've been five of them been looked at by Jack. So when we get through this, or when you all are ready, um, those will be ready for you as well. Well, are the fiscal the shorter? Much shorter. So can you just give us all those at one time so we yep. can look at them all at one time? Absolutely. And some of them have no changes mm -hmm. because what you'll see is. <laughs> The Concord School District redid those in 2017, and the last time the New Hampshire School Board looked at them was 2004. And you've got to wonder, and I've checked some other school districts, and their language is older, too. So some of those accounting principles I don't think have changed. Can I ask? I'm oh, sorry. Did you have a question? No, I was just going to ask. I said, so maybe based on that, what we want to do is not go into the conventions and to details of that right now until after budget. And mm -hmm. just go to get the things that need to get passed, yeah. passed. But like after budget, we could add an extra. Well, my thoughts were too. All we have is budget meetings. We don't. When do we? We don't meet for right. a bit. So, like, I'll choose a couple of school districts and log into their place and see what they look like. And if we if we each just sort of reached out to two or three places mm -hmm. to ask them, what do you do? And you know, um, then we have information. So when we mm -hmm. when we convene, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like you did that, and that now we can look at that. Mm -hmm. But not like, like give us a hit it first part of April or somewhere yeah, there. Yeah, I like I like the idea of everybody going like now that we're thinking about it. Right. Let's all go think about it in the ways. Hey, yeah, scrolling your phone at two yeah. in the morning unless I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I see you yeah. twenty three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, but I love that. Like I think we're all different <laughs> thinkers, and so like something that Liz might think is so clear might be the most confusing thing. So, you know, let's all yeah. just see what feels visually good to us. Website examples, policy examples, et cetera, and then we can workshop it after mm -hmm. um, af after budget season. That's our homework. Can we also look at all the 400s? The 700s. Seven, 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 oh, I'm sorry, 300. 300. Three 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 What's happening? Whatever hundreds. That's just <laughs> whatever hundreds. Yeah, so numbers aren't working. <laughs> good point. So meantime, let's what do you want to do with yeah. Restraint seclusion. I know kind of the changes, but do you want me to just hold off for now? But because I'm a little nervous about holding out too long because you need yeah, guidance. I think we should do it. I think no, we need to just continue what we're doing. You have, yeah. you have some things, and what we should give you direction on, I think, uh, at the very meeting. least here would be um, parent child serious injury. Do we want those de yes. definitions yep. included? Yep. Okay. I, I say yes because I think. Oh, yeah. They make Absolutely. it much clearer to right. going back to Car to Kara's point is for the parent who's not sure of this and reading this that helps them a tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. And yep. I think the, so I think we should include those and, and serious injury. And serious yeah, serious, serious injury. Gotcha. Okay. And then put those back in, change your colors that you've called out to us yep. and make it a, a better document for us to work on the next time. And the paragraphs that they, mm -hmm. what did you call it? I forget what you call it, but making sure the citations. Mm -hmm. The yeah, internal citations. They, yeah, the internal citations. Actually Got it. point to the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, those are. Yep. And then, because that way we'll see a clean document. Um, okay. And then.
then, yes. So add definitions. We're removing the example mm -hmm. yep. uh, of the principal's office. We are improving citations. We are removing medical restraint from the verbiage on page two. Mm -hmm. We are replacing past with dissipated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Twitter painted with Twitter painted. Mm -hmm. I just love it. Um, we had talked in on page four, number two at the top. We had talked about the term case specific. I don't sure. think we made a decision there, but if you couldn't think of one better, if you're yeah. feeling okay, good on that. Um, I think it's fine, just yep. like it is. Okay, good. We're gonna leave it just as is. Um, we are. Because the other one would be like incident specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Case specific is the person. Incident would be something happening Tuesday. Or and then, child specific. Yeah, right. Exactly. Child. child oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. You could do child specific if you want to. That would say the same thing versus case. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. Well, let's do child specific. Yeah, yeah. 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 child. That's clear. Much okay. better. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Then if there's mm -hmm. no child. Yeah. 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 Great job. Shall we? He's the most important part of the whole thing here. So we can understand what we're. Yeah. Um, oh, and we're changing shoulds to shalls yeah. yes. in yes. our, Should have, would have, could have. Um, yeah. which section is and, that? And then the part about um, superintendent extension. Yes. yes, and then in yes. investigation and resolution of complaints, mm -hmm. making it shalls and providing extensions. Yeah. Um, Can I complicate one thing? Get after it. <laughs> On the Merrimack, um, one, they also they also define under their definitions co-regulator, which goes back to that trusted adult selected by a child. Is co-regulator in statute? Co is, isn't it is defined though, isn't it? It is it's not. In there, but it's not the trusted. It's not the definition. Oh, I see what you're saying in here. So it's Maybe like there's it's a... like you used it in the sec the other section where you talked about a trusted adult. Yep. Mm -hmm. Selected yep. by the child. It goes in that section comes into the I'll just give this to you. So yeah, that'd be great. Oh, like. well, I can pull down there. And then there's also yeah. intentional physical contact. Right. Which they also define. Because they put it's them, used yeah, later. They put them in the definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's contact by sense. a school employee. Okay. And then, if just so that everybody can can have them next time, could we have the forms to look at next yeah. time? Yes, we're not we've been editing about that. the new ones that have been issued by uh, DOE. Sure. Absolutely, they came out yesterday. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm like, oh, new them. ones. Okay, um, yeah. they're great. Really giving a new I forms. sent it to Karen and I said, "What should we do with it?" She said, "Let's just let's have time to look at them before okay. we yeah. walk them forward." Okay, so, but they're electronic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're standard. I, we, they're standard. We got to go to my and computer they're all fill to report the incident. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're all, they're, they're, they're like a survey almost. That's what yeah. you're describing. John, when did you start teaching? 1992. Yeah, so I was, ni I was 1987. But I remember handwriting all this. Yeah. yeah. I remember testing, grading, you know, scoring tests by, you know, intelligence tests and then three hours to score it. Like, mm -hmm. nothing else. Oh, too much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was all the money. You learned a lot, though. I yeah. have to say, when, the, when, the, when all of a sudden you could type it in and you got your report printed out, mm -hmm. You, you lost all the process. Yeah, the processing. <laughs> right, no, you just... Have yeah. they weren't right, no, but yeah. I remember learning a lot that way. Okay. Um, one final thing is yeah. uh, amending the final line about the adoption date, just to make sure that's... Oh, yeah, correct. You got it. Thank you. And I'll okay. include the new um, policy crossovers. Yes, please. Um, does anyone have any other items of discussion, or, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn otherwise. I mean, I move to adjourn. Moved by Jim Richards. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Liz Boucher. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. I'll Thank you, everybody. Woo! Okay. Go team! I'm going to write that down. Say that again. This will be a policy.